Hello guys, and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm gonna to show you step-by-step step how to make this really satisfying little motion graphic. And just one thing I'll quickly mention, um, in this tutorial I made a bit of a mistake. It's a very small one that you guys can correct. Um, when you add physics to these rods over here, um, under the collision here, I set it to mesh, but for these cylinders, just make sure you set it to cylinder or capsule. Uh, in fact, just go with capsule, that'll give you the best result. And then you get this kind of nice thing over here. So just remember, that's the only difference. In this tutorial, when I add physics to these rods, just make sure that this, instead of saying mesh, that that says capsule, and you get a much better result. I will be uploading this um, result here to my Patreon as well, the final blend file. All of that's in the description, so let's get into it. So if a new scene open up in Blender, let's select the default objects and press delete. And we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to our mesh options. Let's add in a cylinder. We're gonna go to add cylinder and let's give it 64 verts. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode and with everything active, we're gonna go S, Z and just scale it down until it's like a disc, like something like this. Then let's get our face select option and um, let's select this top face and holding and shift select this bottom face. Then go control B to create a bevel and then just roll the middle mouse button to add an extra segment. So let's go for about three segments or so, just to have a nice rounded bevel. And tab back out, and now we have this puck. We're gonna right click and go shade smooth. Okay, so that's that done. So how do we make the holes in it? So we're gonna go shift A, let's add in a cylinder again. This time we're gonna go for a more reasonable count of 32 vertices. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode. And here's a little trick. If you press A to select everything, which it already is in this case, it's selected. You can go S, Shift, Z. So S, Shift, Z, and it'll scale it in on only the X and Y axis, excluding the Z axis, like this. So let's go with, I don't know, let's just go with something like this for now, okay? That's looking good. Let's tab back out. Let's go to our modifier. Let's go add modifier and go search. We're gonna type in array. Get the array modifier and let's just simply go over here to the y make, make it 1.5 press enter and let's just make this one over here zero like that and let's just give it a count of four and i'm going to go to my top orthographic view and i'm just going to go g and move it over to the side and then i'm going to come here to the drop down and duplicate this modifier and then i'm going to come over here to the z or not the Z, I, mean, I guess the, it's gonna be the X. I'm gonna make the X 1.5, and I'm gonna make the Y zero. So now we have this nice little grid. You can always tab into edit mode and just scale it like so. I'm gonna go with something about this big, tab back out, and now I'm just gonna try and with my best, just line it up till it's kind of in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now we're gonna go ahead, come to the drop down and apply, and then again, apply. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate this stack. And we're gonna right click, it's still active though. And we're gonna press M and go new collection. Let's just call these um, rods. Go okay, so we have a collection called rods. Let's just turn that off. And now let's just select this cylinder over here, this bunch over here. And we're gonna just, I guess we don't have to select it. We just need to select the puck. Yeah, select the puck. Go to your modifiers, add modifier, search. Let's type in boolean. Get a Boolean modifier. Click on the eyedropper and then select these guys here. And then come to the drop down and apply. Okay, so we're gonna actually grab these guys here. We're gonna press M, new collection. Let's just call them cage. Go okay, and let's just turn that cage collection off for now. And this looks like an absolute mess. So select it again and then right click and go shade auto smooth. And now that's gonna look a lot better. Okay, awesome. So how do we make our rods? Let's bring our rods back. Let's select these guys. There's a few things we need to do. So we're gonna tab into edit mode. We're gonna go over to individual origins and with all of them active, we're gonna go S, Shift, Z and just scale them to a little bit smaller. And then we're gonna go S, Z and flatten them. And let's go with something like this, okay? That's looking really good. And another thing we can do is we can go to our face select option and just select the top faces, holding and shift select the bottom faces. And let's just go Control B or Command B and just give them all a bevel, rounding them out, rolling the middle mouse button and then tabbing back out. Let's right click and go Shade Smooth. Um, actually, we forgot something. So let's go back to edit mode. We just wanna press A to select everything. And then we're gonna press P and we're gonna go separate by loose parts. Now, if we go back into object mode, we can select all of these guys. They're their own 
individual objects, but they're all sharing one origin point. So we're gonna press F3 and type in set origin, and we're gonna set the origin to geometry. So now each one of them have their origin in the middle where it should be. So now let's get into some fun stuff. We're gonna hide the rods for now. Um, we're gonna bring back the cage, these guys over here, and let's just select them, tap into edit mode and go S, Z, and just scale them down just a little bit, about this much. There we go. And then with them selected, we're gonna actually go over to our object data properties. We're gonna to go to visibility, or I think it's gonna be viewport display. And I think, yeah, we wanna go down to display as and change it to wire. This is gonna make it possible so we can see the rods inside of here. And we're just gonna tab into edit mode. And once again, we have our individual origins. We're just gonna go S, Shift, and Z. So S, Shift, Z, and just scale these guys up to a, a little bit bigger like this. And then we're gonna go back into object mode. And I guess we can bring the rods in here as well now. And we're gonna select the cage and holding in shift select the disc here and go control P, object keeps transform. So now if we select this disc and we double tap R, you can see that goes along. So now all we have to do is select this guy over here. Let's go over to our physics, give it a rigid body. So this is the cage. Um, we're gonna go ahead and make it passive. And let's enable animate it and let's change the shape to mesh. And we need to tab into edit mode and go over down to our uh, mesh overlays here and just go and see the normals. Currently they're facing out. We need to go with everything active. We need to go Alt N and recalculate inside so they're all facing in. Okay, like this. And then let's go back to object mode. Let's hide the cage for now and let's select um, one of these rods, give that a rigid body. Let's make it mesh. We want it to be active, so we're gonna leave it as so. But what we need to do is with this one active, we need to hold in shift and select the rest of them. And now we can press an F3 and type in copy from, and go copy from active. And now they're all gonna share the active, the same thing that this one does. They all have the same properties. So now let's bring back our cage. Let's make sure to save, and now let's press I guess we can go to frame one and just hit the space bar. And now we can see that they're um, in here. If they're bouncing around like this, what you could do is just select your cage over here, um, tab into edit mode, and once again, with all of these rods selected, just go S, Shift, Z, and just scale them a little bit bigger. And now let's go back to frame one, hit the space bar. Okay. Still not 100%, we could always hide the cage over here, just select all of these rods, tab into edit mode and press A to select everything. We still have the individual origins and let's just go S and just scale them all just a little bit smaller. And let's bring back our cage and let's see if that's better. Okay, so now that's better. Okay, uh, if we really have to, we can always select the cage and just go over to our rigid body, um, go to the sensitivity and maybe make it 0 0.005. And then let's see if that works. Okay, that's okay, I think that that should be fine. So now let's just hide our cage. And now we're gonna grab this puck. We're gonna go to frame one. Let's just give ourselves 130 frames to work with here. And on frame one, we're gonna press I and hit, and we're gonna click on location and rotation to add in the keyframe. Let's grab that over here and go Shift D to duplicate it and drag it to 130. And then let's enable auto keying. We're gonna come up to frame 45 and we're gonna go R to rotate in our front view and then R, Z and rotate like so. Let's come up to frame 80 and on frame 80, we're just gonna go double tap R, just rotate a little bit like so. And then let's turn off auto keying. So what we're gonna see if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar is something that looks like this. Okay, and that's just really kind of cool. Really, really awesome. Okay, so let's quickly go over to our scene properties. Let's go to the rigid body world and let's go over to our cache. Let's make it 130, like so. 
And let's go ahead and bake this simulation. So it's baked into a blend file. And now we have that. Kind of looks cool. So now we're gonna go Shift A. Let's add in a torus. Tap into edit mode and go Alt S and just scale it down. And then S to scale it up just a little bit. Maybe about this big. There we go. Then go Shift A, let's add in a UV sphere and let's go G, Y or G, X, move it over. S to scale this guy and then Shift D to duplicate. Let's put one over here, make it a bit bigger by pressing S and then Shift D, let's put a little guy over here and just scale it down. Tab back out, right click and go Shade Smooth. And now we have that. So what we're going to do in our front view, we're going to grab this guy Enable auto king, double tap R, and then rotate just a little bit to the side. And I should have done that on frame one. So I'm just gonna grab this keyframe G to move it. Just make sure it's on frame one. There we go. And we're also gonna duplicate that by going shift D, make sure it's on frame 130. And then we're gonna to go to frame 50. And in frame 50, we're just gonna go R, double Z, and just rotate it a bit, and then R to rotate it like so. Let's come over to frame 90. Double tap R, double tap Z, and just go like so, and then rotate it slightly. Turn off auto keying, and now what we're gonna have, it's just kind of this kind of cool rotation like that. Very simple to do. I might just give this a little bit more thickness. It's optional, something like that should be fine. But now in our front view, we're gonna go Shift A, let's add in a camera. In our right orthographic view of the camera, we're going to go G, Y, just move it back. Then we're going to just press zero to go into our camera view. And you can adjust this however you want, but I'm going to go something like this. Then go Shift A, let's just add in a plane, S to scale that up, G to bring it down, and let's just, in edit mode, grab this back edge, and then just extrude it back a few times like so. And then in object mode, right click and go shade smooth. And now we have a nice backdrop. So now let's go ahead and go to our render engine. Let's change it to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And then under the max samples, let's make it 55. And now we're gonna go shift A, let's just add in an area light and in our front view, we're just gonna go G and move it over to the side. R to rotate it in, and let's give that a strength of 2,500. Let's just increase the size. Then we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a plane. We're gonna go G to move it over. R to rotate it, let's just scale that plane up. Give it a material. And let's just come here and make the value five by typing in five. And now if we go to our camera view and we hit Z and we go rendered, we should see some really nice lighting here. And you can always kind of grab this light here and duplicate it, bring it forward just a little bit and rotate it in. And that looks really nice. So that's a very simple kind of way to get some nice reflective lighting. And this over here is bouncing some of the light back for us. So from here, it's simple. Let's select this disc. Under our materials, let's give it a new material and kind of give it a brownish color. Make it metallic and bring down the roughness. Then let's grab this guy over here, new. Material, let's make it metallic by dragging up the value. Let's make it slightly purplish and then bring down the roughness. And then let's grab the backdrop, go new. And for this one, we're gonna make it slightly bluish purple. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, this is what we have. But what we can do to really make these guys here look cool, let's just go ahead and um, under the rods, let's just come here and just click and drag and just select all of them over here, so they're all active. And let's just make sure one of them is the main active element. We're gonna go new. And then let's go Control L and just link those materials. And now let's go over to our shading workspace. And with this new material, this is called rods or rod. We're just gonna grab the base color here and drag. And let's just type in object. And let's go object info random. And now we got random variations here. And all we have to do is go shift A search and get a color ramp. Type in color ramp, place it over here. 
And let's grab this one over here, drag it up. We're gonna make that a nice blue. Go plus, let's grab the middle one and let's make that a nice orange. And then let's grab the one on the end here and make that a nice yellow, like so. And we're also gonna take the roughness, drag it down so it's nice and reflective. Now let's go back to our layout. Let's go to our render engine. And let's go and enable motion blur. And then just grab a shot that you like. I'm gonna go something like this. And let's go render and then render the image. And here you can see we have a bit of an issue. I'm just gonna quickly press escape to stop. We need to actually just come here to the cage and just turn it off for the render so it doesn't render in the final animation. And then let's go render and render that image. And here we have it guys, a very simple little motion graphics animation. As always, if you wanna render it out as a final animation, go to your output, select the folder under output on your computer. You can choose anywhere like your desktop. Change the file format to FFmpeg video. And then under the encoding, you can change it to an MP4. And then this time you can go render and click render animation and it'll render it out to your selected destination. In this case, it's my desktop. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll be uploading the final result to my Patreon. All of that's in the description and I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.